Hello, and thank you for downloading the TAP7 demo. My name is Todd Summers, the Director of, D of Research and Development for SoftWrite. This, vi this video is a high-level overview of TAP7 capabilities uh, as available through the demonstration version. The TAP demo is a full set of capabilities for TAP, but geographically restricted to the Denver, Colorado area. For those that are familiar with TAP6, you'll see that a lot of the capabilities, a lot of the workflow is very similar to TAP6. Uh, the, the difference being in TAP7, everything is project-based. Um, we've also consolidated a great deal of the capabilities into a single modern interface. So to get started, we'll click on the open button. You'll see here, when you initially click, there is a TAP7 demo project T7 project that comes preloaded with TAP. Click Open to open the project. It appears in the Project Explorer pane. If you click on the project, the details are shown below. You can expand here. You'll see within projects, you have the ability to add folders and path and coverage studies. These are path and coverage studies as shown here. Uh, a previously run coverage study will show as the lock button here. Let's start with path studies. If you click on a path study, this one is the Cheyenne Mountain to Castle Rock. On the left side is your fixed facility transmit. On the right side is your fixed facility receive. These are based off the same database. TAP comes preloaded with six facilities, six demo facilities. These are locked down. You can create copies or make new ones under this menu here. For each facility, you have facility information, site information, transmitter info, transmitter losses, and transmitter antenna information that you can enter or import from a file. There's also information for receivers. This other side, for the receive side, you have receiver information, including frequency and sensitivity, receiver antenna, including antenna height, you have the ability to select an antenna from antenna database, receiver losses, similar to the transmit side, receiver gains, and, and digital specs. Below the graphic for path, you have the ability to set up your topo data, including your topo step, earth curvature, interpolator, your Fresnel zone. In this case, we have 0.5 F1 selected. We have multiple propagation models to select from. Bullington, Egley, Hatta Davis, and Lonely Rice, Akamura, rounded obstacle, and shadowing. For land cover, you can select a land cover portfolio. TAP comes preloaded with a set of land cover, also for the Denver, Colorado area. This is shown under the uh, terrain up here. Coloration according to this legend down below. If you have surface features to add, you can add a surface feature file as well, which will be shown on the graphic. Profile display, you can set your distance and elevation units, and there are a few other options there as well. Once you have your transmit and receive set up, you can also click on cursor, click enable data cursor, and as you move over the graphics, the cursor will appear and information will be loaded on the right side. Wherever your, wherever your mouse is located, if you click shift, Left click, you can capture the point, which is on the capture column as well. In the receive field pane, you can see the receive field, uh, receive a, a quick view of signal strength according to whatever propagation model you've selected here. You have free space field, prop model loss, down to receive field, receive power, and margin. Uh, you can include land cover, it also includes surface features if those are available as well, and information from the prop model as well. For VHF or UHF link, you click the VHF UHF link budget. All the information you need to reproduce the link is up above. And down at the very bottom, the calculations, including received signal level and unfaded fade margin. For microwave link budget, oh, let's close this. It'll warn you if you do not have adequate Fresnel clearance if you click on that. If I can switch to the microwave sites, click on microwave link budget. Microwave link budget, you can calculate absorption loss, rain loss, terrain factor, and climate factor. Similar setup to the VHF, UHF, but at the very bottom of the calculation is reliability percentage in terms of percentage of year availability, and then outage in seconds per year. If you wish to export your path to KML file for visualization in a 3D viewer, for example, Google Earth, you can click on Export 3D path, and that'll create a KML Fresnel path, Fresnel mesh that you can view in Google Earth. Once you have everything set up um, there, 
You can also generate a report as well. And moving on to coverage studies, we have in here preloaded with tap, radial study, target study, tile study. This tile study has been previously run, so it is locked. An output consists of a tile shape file, a CSV file, and a summary file. If I right click, I can delete study results. That'll clear it. It allows me to modify and then rerun that study. So for this tile study itself, here's the selection of your coverage type. Here's a tile study, radial study, contour study, and then target study. You have the same selections for topo data, prop model, lane cover, and surface features as you see in the path. So in this case, I have tile study selected. Since it's been modified, it shows up with the asterisk here. If I go to home, save it, it's saved. Now if I return to coverage ribbon bar, I can run the current study. This loads up the TAP7 study server. It'll show you progress. It loads the studies, study calculation progress out of 10,000 points in this case. This is the number completed. This is the amount of elapsed time and estimated time to complete. When TAP, when TAP completes, the study server will stay open. So you can leave that open and run additional runs through that study server um, or subsequent runs through that study server. When the study completes, the results will be written to a shapefile, and that shapefile will be loaded in Mapper. That Mapper is also opening in depo, demo mode in this case, so you will see a demo watermark coming across the front of it. When you have the licensed version, that watermark goes away. Mapper has a own, its own set of capabilities, which we will cover in a separate, um, a separate video later on. So the preload comes in. Green is above threshold, red is below threshold for this particular site setup. On the left side is a set of shapefiles. You can load shapefiles and overlay shapefiles however you want. You can adjust transparency with this slider here. You can zoom here. And if you want to adjust the layer settings, click here. For each one, you can show you have the option of showing distance circles. In this case, I've set 50 at a step size of 5. We can change it to 10 just to show the difference. You can show mouse tips and select power it for this case. You can also choose to show the transmit site. You can set the marker size, marker type, label position, label size. And you can actually set the label text as well associated with this. I go to analysis. It'll show me a table of records in terms of cumulative um, coverage for the different levels that you set under style. Under style, you can add multiple thresholds. Uh, however you want, you can change the colors of these by double-clicking here. You can add talkback thresholds. So under talkback, you have the ability to set multiple talkback thresholds. And it is initialized with the talkback thresholds that were that were set with the mobile facility that you set up when you do when you did the study run. So now I've also got talkback in there. Once you've set up all of these colors, the thresholds, and then you can also change the labels here. We'll make this talk out in this case. Make this no service, change this to transparent, click OK. Now we have visualization of coverage over this area for a very quick study. Legend is shown here. When you are happy with the appearance here, you can click on the print button to output to a document viewer. Uh, you can also capture the image if you'd like. And as I mentioned, this watermark goes away when you have the full license version. We'll spend more time on this in another video. So let's go ahead and close this. We leave the study server open. It'll show timing and various information about the study that was run previously. If you have questions about a particular section, you click in that section and you click on the F1 button. This loads embedded help for that particular section that you've clicked on. Getting started. Expansive directories of help that you can click through. You also have access to that by just clicking on the question mark button throughout the tab. So once we're happy with the study that we've run, we can close it. 
If we wish to create a new study, click on the new button. You create, you give it a name, it'll automatically load into a folder with that same name. So in this case, we'll just make it my new project. Click OK. I can add a folder if I wish. This is a way that you could organize studies within projects. And you could add a path study. You can give it whatever name you'd like, a description. You can even give it an engineer name. Finish. I can add a coverage study. Finish. So once the coverage, the coverage study has not been initialized um, to run, so you'll get this warning here. Whenever you see a notification, you can click on go over here to notifications, and it'll give you information down here in the bottom left corner. For instance, here you can click on the radial study, say number, 72 radials, radial distance of 50. It'll appear here, the area, the area it's going to be run. Once it's set up, the run study, run current study button will become active. Save, click Run Study in the study server. This will now be loaded. This shows the radial progress as it goes through, lapse time, estimated time to complete. And like the other one, it'll load a tap mapper when it is complete. Do not forget to run through the quick start and installation guides that are available on the website when you're initially getting started up. And thank you for viewing this video. If you have any questions technical, of the technical variety, feel free to contact support at softwrite.com. If you have sales questions, please email sales at softwrite.com. Thank you again for viewing and happy tapping. Enjoy.